Welcome to DJ Tutorials. This is a tip for Blender users. And what we're going to be doing today is looking at the issue with the EV glass shaders. So before I begin, uh, you will need to have downloaded and installed the uh, AMD Radeon Pro Render uh, render engine for Blender. Uh, if you go down, if you do a quick search at for uh, AMD uh, Radeon Pro Render, you'll be able to find the download uh, just fine. I'm not going to cover how to download and install. Basically, just go down the list here and uh, go to learn more, follow the instructions. I won't be going over the details uh, on how to use this engine. I'm just going to show you how some of the benefits, well, one benefit in particular over the EV uh, Blender 2.8 uh, rasterized uh, or you know in quote gaming engine and maybe this will help you when you run into uh, some issues doing some quick renders with some glass shaders and stuff like that with Eevee. So now that we're in Blender um, let's go ahead and open up just the default and hopefully yours looks similar to this and again I'm just going to be going over some um, the issue that I run into when using Eevee for a very specific things that I'm trying to do and how the Radeon Pro Render render engine actually helps resolve those issues and uh, keeps the very quick render speed of the EV engine. If I go over here to our render settings, you can see it's set to EV. And I'm just going to throw some really quick materials. I'm going to add a floor plane here. I'm going to move the cube so that it's uh, resting above like this. And what we're going to do is we're just going to set the uh, materials for uh, some glass. So I'm going to change this instead of to principled BSDF. I'm going to change this to glass just to make it easy. And the floor here, I'm just going to make it a, a plain white uh, uh, material. And if you know anything about EV, there's a lot of settings that you have to do to make it really utilize the... Uh, refractions. So what you tend to need to do is go over here to the render settings. You need to click on the screen space uh, reflections here and then click refraction. And then on your object that actually has the refraction material, you need to make sure that you go down to the settings and turn it on. And you can see that it's a little bit misty or whatever in there and that's because there's a roughness. So let's turn that down. So that's basically what a uh, the glass shader just by itself with no roughness would look like in Eevee. So pretty great if that's just what you're doing. Um, you can see that there's the end of the floor plane uh, back over here and the gray background. Uh, I'm not gonna throw an HDRI in just now um, to show anything off, but if we take this cube and I duplicate it, okay? And let's actually just move that along the floor here. And I'm just gonna set this to whatever the floor is. So I'm just gonna call this floor, okay? And you can see, I can, I, I can, I can see the refraction here. The object is back there, uh, it's behind, and you can see that there is a refracted uh, object or whatever is back there. You can see there's the ground plane, you can see that there's the background, and you can see the object behind it. So that works fine. But the problem comes in if I take this object and I want to make this also a refraction. So if I change that to a refraction, you see you can't really see the object back there. It's no longer really refracting the object as a real glass object. It's sort of like see-through. And I haven't seen any tutorials or any information as to how to make this not be the case. Um, there is a way that you can change the refraction depth. So over here on the right panel, I'm changing the refraction depth. And that kind of like changes how it's refracting inside the object. But there's really nothing that's making it to where this back object here is visible. And as far as I can tell, there's really no way to do this. And I've done a few projects uh, using EV, and this has always been the case. I've, I've tried my darndest to get it to work. So if anybody knows how to actually get it to work properly, uh, by all means. But the fact that it's so difficult to kind of get it working correctly is sort of... Um, uh, it, it, it's kind of, to me, an obvious issue with using these types of shaders. 
So how if we're trying to make something that is, let's say it's a fluid animation that has a lot of bouncing around stuff like water, um, where you want to see what's being refracted behind it because it's also a glass shader or something like that, how would you be able to get that refraction visible using a raster engine like this? Um, well, there is a, uh, there's a method that I like to use, and it's using the Radeon Pro Render uh, engine. I'm not going to go over how to install Radeon Pro Render. I'm just going to show you how you can use it. I will be doing tutorials later that really go into depth on how to use Radeon Pro Render, but for right now, this is just a quick tip just to, you know, whet your appetite a little bit. So if I go over here to the Render Engine selection and I go to Radeon Pro Render, there's a whole lot of different settings. I'm not going to go into detail on all the settings and all that kind of stuff right now. I just want to show you how to use a some of this basic stuff for this specific issue regarding refractive objects. So if I go up here to the left, it'll say RPR. That should be changed once you change this to Radeon Pro Render. And I'm using my Radeon 7 right now for my render engine. I go up here and full is basically, there's there's a multiple levels of quality. Whereas EV, you have to have a lot of different settings and all that kind of stuff. How this works is you have very, very low raster uh, engine quality to the full ray tracing quality. And I'll show you what the full looks like later. But for right now, let's just click on low. And let's take a look at what this looks like when I hit the rendered option. And you'll see that it's kind of quirky. There's some weird artifacting going on and, and all that. And that's because if we go over to the shading tab, the uh, way that this is shaded is different. It doesn't really use this glass BSDF very well for a Radeon Pro Render. It actually has its own set. So we're going to delete this, which will make these pink. And we're going to add the RPR, or Radeon Pro Render Uber node, and take the shader and put it in here. Just a note, Node Wrangler doesn't work with this, at least as far as I know right now. So you might be frustrated with that, but trust me, it's worth getting used to. Um, one other thing is sometimes you have to refresh the uh, compilation of the render just to make sure nothing weird is going on. So now that we're looking at this, you have all of these different settings in here. And we're going to make this very simple by just clicking on the refraction button here, clicking off the diffuse, and you see it's kind of similar to what it was before. And then we're going to change this metalness right here to IOR, or Index of Refraction. We're going to take the reflection weight down just a bit to like, let's say, a 0.5. And we're going to take the reflection roughness down. And it seems kind of like the same issue as we were seeing before. There's not really a whole lot that's changed. Let's click on the Allow Caustics here. Now. If I change this to medium, the medium render quality, you start to see the actual refraction starting to take place. And if I pass by the other refraction object, you can see now there is a visible refraction object in the back. And this is great because basically what you can do with this is you can have water simulations, you can have, um, you know, if, you, if you're using a lot of glass or refractive objects in a scene that has, let's say, potion bottles or something like that, and you find it really difficult to use EV, this sort of helps resolve those issues because you can use the raster or, you know, approximation technique of rendering quickly and at the same time uh, have that extra quality. So let's do some different stuff here. Let's actually add a background. And again, I'm not going to go over the details on how all this works. I'm just going over the, um, the basics. I'm just adding an HDRI from uh, HDRI Haven. If you've never been there, uh, by all means, go, go to it because it's great. So you can see how the, the uh, reflections and the refractions are working with that. And then I'm going to take this ground plane. And you can see right here. It's set as this principled BSDF from the Blender engine, which will work fine. It's just not as good, I think, as the Radeon Pro Render Uber nodes. And we're going to click this button here. If I go here, I can click this to convert it to the principled 
or the uh, RPR Uber node. And it basically takes some of the same settings and tries to approximate it to be roughly the same. Now, if we take a look at this again with our HDRI background, and we uh, take a look at these nodes, there's also other things that we can do uh, that will increase the quality of the look of these uh, glass objects. So the first thing you can do is you can go up to the RPR um, uh, tab here and change this to high. Uh, just a quick note, sometimes there you can get some artifacting and some weird rendering stuff. Just go to the solid mode and then go to the rendered and it will update the uh, compilation of your render. And you can see that once we do that, automatically you can see that there is just a much better render quality going on. And that's because it's adding kind of like how the RTX uh, video cards will add a bit of ray tracing to a uh, sort of like a rasterized uh, engine. And so you get a little bit more real, uh, realism in your shot. You can see that there's some uh, caustics being thrown off there. Uh, and uh, overall, you get kind of like a more sharp image there. And of course, if you want to then, if you're sending for a uh, full uh, render, you can go in, set it to full with the full ray tracing, and then you have a beautiful ray traced um, scene. I've found that the high settings sometimes have some weird issues when dealing with uh, the uh, reflection caustics and stuff like that. So I tend to use the full or the medium setting. But if you're doing test renders and you're testing some animation, by all means, use the other uh, settings to help you out. Now, uh, just to show you the power of this, if you go in and uh, you really start to play with some of this, so let's say I take this cube, um, I'll put it in the center here, uh, I will add a UV sphere and just sort of scale that up. And let's also add a torus. Let's set this to shade smooth real quick. Add a torus. And take this and just put everything inside of that. And I'm just trying to show you guys kind of like the fun sort of stuff you can do with um, these engines. Normally, something like this could take quite a while to render in uh, cycles. But if I take all of these objects and I'm just going to make it our material and I will link the materials together so they're all the same and I go to the rendered mode. you can see that they're all showing refractive depth inside. And again, if I change this over to high, there's even more detail. And then if I change this to full, there's even more of that detail in there. And you can just kind of switch between your different render settings and uh, depending on where you are in your process, if you want to add more detail to it or anything like that, you can do that. Uh, one more quick little tip. This little re refraction thin surface is pretty neat. You click that on and it makes it almost like a bubble effect uh, where the surface is very thin. There's different settings that you can do to like change how that works, but it's kind of fun if you didn't know you could do that. Um, you can add that on to make it kind of like a bubble effect on the outside. So that's going to be it for this tutorial. I hope that it helps you out with any projects that you've been working on where you need to have uh, multiple transparent glass objects and you just need it to be able to render faster because of how Cycles does the uh, glass calculations and all that. And I hope to see you in the future when I go over more of these Radeon Pro Render tips. It really is a great engine to work on, albeit it's still a work in progress, but there's some really great efficiencies that can be gained from things like this.
Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe, and make sure that you hit the little bell icon to notify you when new videos are uploaded. And I will see you next time on DJ Tutorials.